What up, Melvin7 here. Finally, I'm back with a football video. And I've got to say a, a quick thank you for the support that I received yesterday. I was blown away. Uh, obviously, I was very apprehensive uploading something that personal, but overwhelming positivity. Like, you know, so, some of my subs uh, tweeted me on Twitter about their stories and uh, loads of helpful links for creams and what to do and, you know, changing lifestyles and... My God, just thanks, honestly, like, YouTube comment sections are known for, like, hate and spam and all that, but there was nothing but love in the comment section yesterday, so, yeah, cheers, and, uh, we've got that little soppy bit out of the way, so, uh, yeah, on to football, this isn't gonna be about any new upcoming rumours or anything, because I haven't done a football video in over a month, so it's just gonna be my thoughts on some of the biggest transfers, of course, I'm gonna be missing out a lot, because... Well, it's it's over a month worth of transfers. So, obviously, the biggest one hasn't actually been confirmed yet. But Neymar for 197 million pounds to PSG, ludicrous. 106, well, 108 million more than Paul Pogba scored. Uh, scored <laughs> was last year. Like, and he was the world record transfer fee. Absolutely mind-boggling. Um, I really don't think. This transfer is going to be broken for a while. I think it's going to be like the Ronaldo when uh, Real Madrid paid 80 million. It's not going to be six, eight years till we see this record broken. Absolutely crazy sum of money. But, you know, for PSG, this is huge for them. Like, they've got the money. Uh, we'll see what FFP do, what UEFA do after it. Um, like, if there's any repercussions. But if not, if it's all done somehow legitly, I don't know how the hell they're going to do it legitly. But... Regardless, when it goes through, I know La Liga have tried to not take the payment, but Barcelona will, it's a release close. It'll all get finalised, I'm fairly certain. It's a coup for PSG, not the price, just the player. Because other players will want to play alongside Neymar, even though it's known as a dead league. And I mean, they should walk all comp cup competitions and the league in France now pretty easily. Um, as long as they can keep hold of like players like Verratti, for example. Uh, and yeah, they're, they're building a really strong team and their next challenge is obviously to try and challenge for the, the Champions League now with a signing like Neymar other players will want to join so with the current squad they've got they can certainly mount a challenge for the UCL as can many teams this season you never really know what's going to happen but uh, it, it strengthens them and as for Barcelona they're gonna have to look at a replacement because the way that front three played is like nothing I've ever seen in world football like MSN were just ridiculously good they were all on the same wavelength they knew where each other were uh, in correspondence with the others uh, they knew where to be it was a very fluid system so they're gonna have to find someone uh, to adequately replacement now there's rumors of Coutinho uh, as a Man United fan, because it would piss off a lot of Liverpool fans, I would love Barcelona to buy him, but I don't think he's the right style of player. There's been a lot of jokes about uh, Coutinho and his long shots and stuff, but they are they are fair, kind of, because Coutinho does like to take a lot of long shots, so that's kind of not what Messi, Suarez and Neymar were about. So, you know, when Messi's waiting for a through ball, if Coutinho blasts the ball from uh, 40 yards and it doesn't go in, he's not going to be very happy, but... Aside from that, it's not really a like-for-like -like replacement. Coutinho is a completely different player to Neymar. Uh, there are other targets that are after Antoine Griezmann, but I don't think he'd leave Atletico Madrid until next season. That's why he didn't want to move to Man United. Uh, that was all but done, but the transfer ban obviously prevented him from doing so. He didn't want to disrespect Atletico. There's also Kylian Mbappe, who's been linked to Real Madrid and Man City. I reckon he'll go to Real Madrid personally, 160 million. <sighs> Wow, that's a huge risk for an 18-year-old who's had eight phenomenal months. Don't get me wrong, but he could flop. I don't think he will, but he could, so that's a huge risk. But uh, there's also uh, Uz, Uz, Uzana Dembele, Uz, Uzman Dembele. You know which one I mean, the one for uh, Borussia Dortmund. I think he would probably, out of the targets there, if they couldn't get Griezmann, he would be like the number one perfect role, I think. Griezmann would be a perfect replacement, but I hope United sign him next year. If not him, I think Dembele would be the more sensible option for Barcelona. They could mould him. He's young enough, but he's had a couple of seasons. Not like Mbappe, where it's just one season. He's had a couple of very good seasons at Dortmund. So he would still be a risk. Of course, any young player is a risk. Uh, but they definitely need an adequate replacement for the, the way they uh, play. On to Man United transfers. Obviously, I already did videos on Lindelof. That was all done. 
Lukaku, huge, huge coup for us. Yeah, it's a huge fee, 75 million, probably rising to 90 million with add-ons. But it, it's worth every penny for us. It's a player that I'm very excited for. It's a player that we haven't really signed in so many years. Like, we've never signed a, a striker that's about to hit his prime. A Premier League proven about to hit his prime striker. Like, we've had successful strikers, Ibrahimovic, Robin Van Persie, uh, Wayne Rooney... Uh, but he was young and the other two were in the end of their careers. So this is a, is a phenomenal signing and I, I was 100% sure he was going to Chelsea for many months as everyone was. But we swooped in and regardless of what Conte says, he's kind of backtracked on some of his comments. But yeah, about Morata being first choice for Chelsea. Lukaku was first choice. I know there's this, oh, Lukaku was first choice for Chelsea. Morata was for Conte. But why does Morata, uh, sorry, why does Conte come out and criticize Morata's physique, his physicality, his fitness, all of that if, you know, a player who's known for his physicality uh, wasn't his first choice. Like, it, it just it doesn't make much sense, but I think Morata will do well for Chelsea. Uh, I think Lukaku will hit the ball running straight away for United. He's already scored three in pre-season, a, a lovely goal against Man City in a pre-season friendly, um, but I think because of the Premier League experience, he knows exactly what's there. He'll hit the ground running and he's got a big chance, along with Kane or Aguero, to be the top scorer this season. Morata, on the other hand, I think he's the sort of player that will need time. He'll get better season upon season, but right now, I can't see him getting more than 15 goals, which would still be decent, but I think Batshuayi is going to be uh, Chelsea's top scorer. I, honestly, I think he's a bit underrated, to be honest. He's gone under the radar because of the, well, Costa playing, but... Every time I've seen him play, he's always been a threat for Chelsea. So I reckon he's going to be their focal point this season. And that's why Conte's kind of tried Morata in a wing role. Because I think he wants to play Batshuayi up top. But we'll see with that. Also, Man United, their third signing. Well, our third signing, Nemanja Matic. Couldn't be happier. Really couldn't be happier. He had a great 45 minutes. I know it was only against Sampdoria and it's only pre-season. But <laughs> traditionally, you can only beat what's put in front of you. Blah, blah, blah. But... As everyone knows, he frees up Pogba now, and that is so important. Pogba's been phenomenal for us in pre-season. This is his first pre-season with us. He was phenomenal towards the last stages of last season, and in glimpses, he showed what he could do, but he was played all across the midfield, and now he's going to have a settled role, probably with Herrera, uh, Pogba, just behind... Uh, well, you know what I mean. Like Herrera and Pogba will be allowed to drift forward, uh, as much as they want and Matic will just be the anchor and uh, thank God for Abramovich because if it wasn't for him there's no way Chelsea would have sold to a direct rival he respected the players wishes he wanted to stay in the Premier League he didn't want to go to Juventus he wanted to play for Manchester United under Jose Mourinho and thank God Matic he really wanted to um, come to us and without that like he wouldn't have pushed for the move and Chelsea definitely wouldn't have accepted the fee 35 million rising to 40 million in this market, I'm, I'm over the moon. He might be 29, but for a CDM, that's kind of his prime years, 27 to about 31, and then they start to denature a little bit more because they don't have to do as much running as some of the other players. I think it's a really good signing. Uh, Lacazette for Arsenal, it's a signing they should have made three, four years ago, to be honest. Um, I, I reckon he's going to score a lot of goals, but I don't think he's going to be a game changer. But now that Sanchez looks as though he's going to stay, uh, that's going to be pivotal. Like Sanchez is their game changer. Lacazette will just pop in with a goal now and then. But it's so detrimental for Arsenal that they keep Sanchez, especially with Europa League commitments. I don't think people realise if you actually try and win the Europa League, how much of a toll it leaves on your squad. And Arsenal are already known for getting so many injuries. So, yeah, like it's not just us when we won Europa League. Chelsea struggled in the league when they won it. Liverpool struggled when they got to the final in the league. So it's league or Europa League, really. Like it's very hard to balance the two. So um, yeah, if they had lose, lost Sanchez, and if they do lose Sanchez, of course there's rumours of PSG of uh, Man City. Then yeah, this Lacazette signing won't mean very much. But if they can keep Sanchez even for a year, uh, keep Özil, you know, have a balanced squad, then they are going to be a bit more of a threat. But like Arsenal fans, you know, cry out for season upon season. It's not enough. Like they've signed a left back, a really good one, uh, best one in the Bundesliga last season for free. Uh, but 
they, they still need you know someone else like a, a central midfielder I think they're lacking I don't think Xhaka will be the player that they need for this season and maybe a centre back as well Rob Holding's done really well for them uh, in the uh, latter parts of last season but yeah I, I still don't think they're complete yet neither are us like we need another winger uh, Man United but yeah and <laughs> moving on to Man City crazy crazy money they've spent on their defence over 200 million they've spent this window but They've ironed out a lot of their issues. They've got rid of a lot of older players. They've signed young fullbacks. Kyle Walker, I think he's 27, 28, so he's the experienced fullback. They've paid, well, a world record fee for Walker, then broke it a couple of days later with Mendy. So, you know, it, in this market, it's pay what you have to. So they've ironed out their problems. They've got the most balanced and probably the best overall squad in the league. Supposedly the best manager in the world, as their fans keep saying. So... There's no excuses now. Like They have everything supposedly the best. They have to win the Premier League and possibly another trophy to go with it, but at least the Premier League. If they don't, it's it's a failure. Like They've ironed out the issues that they had last season. They've shipped out all their old players, well, most of them. Uh, most of them that were just terrible last season, you know, like Sanya, like Kolarov. Well, Korov was all right, but Zabaleta, who was getting on, like all of these players they've got rid of and they've replaced them with younger replacements. And they've got vibrant attack, uh, attacking options. They might be looking at another midfielder or another striker. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see, but they, they have to win the league or else it's a failure for Pep Guardiola, in my opinion. And uh, lastly, we'll move on to Liverpool. Uh, they've made some good buys. Uh, well, I say good buys. Uh, they... What I mean by that, they've only made two signings, but they've been very good for them. It's a left-back, Robertson from Hull, uh, not a star name or anything, but someone that they needed. And uh, Moreno's looked pretty good in pre-season, so maybe, you know, because he's got competition, that'll inspire him to be a bit better. Uh, and Mohamed Salah, who seems to be a perfect fit for Liverpool's system, so we'll see what they can do. Um, it's going to be hard to, to tell. They've looked good in pre-season, but Klopp usually starts a season strongly. And then because of the work rates he demands and his uh, rigorous training regimes, uh, it seems as though later on in the season they get injuries or fatigued and then they come short. So we'll see if they can amend that. Uh, we'll see what other signings they make. But the top six are all making moves, apart from Tottenham Hotspur, who overall have the best XI of anyone in the league when it's just their 11 players, but they've got the worst bench of anyone in the top seven. So they really need to be buying depth. Uh, you know, players like Sissoko and Winks, when they're coming on, they're not they're not good enough. Like They need other players to come in and make an impact. Janssen wasn't great last season. So as I say, their XI is fine, but when they get injuries, they just don't have enough. And actually, one last thing, Everton... They've done a lot of business, and I think they're going to be a threat to the top six uh, to potentially break in there. Pickford, forget the fee. He was phenomenal for Sunderland, 30 million. It's, it's a little bit of a risk, but I think he's going to be a fantastic English goalkeeper. Uh, Michael Keane, he'll probably plug a, a hole in their defence. It's a good signing for them. Klassan, Rooney, Ramirez, uh, potentially Sigurdsson. That would be huge for them. So they're making some really big moves, and uh, I'll be intrigued to see... Who finishes higher out of Liverpool and Everton? Uh, that, that'll be interesting, and whether Everton can break into the top six. But for now, that's going to be it. It's just a quick roundup, and then tomorrow it'll be back with rumours, maybe other uh, transfers that I haven't talked about that you do want me to, perhaps like foreign transfers or other teams in the Premier League. Hopefully you have enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video, and yeah, peace.